I'm Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dyke is retired. Although the primary function of the silent service is to sink ships, they have to be ready for most any kind of an oddball assignment. One of the oddest fell to the USS Grupa, which was operating in the vicinity of the Solomon Islands. This is the story of her secret mission. It was September 23rd, 1943. USS Grouper, under command of Martin P. Hartel of Annapolis, Maryland, was patrolling the area south of Truck. The executive officer was Lieutenant John D. Mason of Edensburg, Pennsylvania. It was one of those fabled South Sea nights, warm, peaceful, scented by flowers from a nearby tropical island. The war seemed a million miles off, and tomorrow it would be even farther away. After two long years of fighting, the Grouper was due to leave for San Francisco in the morning. You know, it's a shame. What's that, Captain? All this. Things you've always read about. South seas, tropical islands. Nights like this? Well, I'll still take San Francisco. I always figured I'd come here someday just to see what it was like. Well, you made it, Captain. Yeah, I made it. You boat, keep those cigarettes covered. There's a war on, you know. Aye, aye, sir. Hey, Corley. Yeah, what? You know what I'm gonna do when this war's over? You ain't gonna do nothing. This war ain't never gonna be over. All right, all right, then I don't wait. As soon as we get back to Frisco, I'm gonna transfer me to the infantry. Yeah, which army? Which army? Or the United States Army, stupid. Never heard of it. Oh, Corley, how'd you ever get in the Navy? You're illiterate. No, don't be such a wise guy. Yeah, maybe you're right. I like you, boy. You're all right. That's why I'm gonna cut you in on a good thing. Yeah, like what? Well, now, you're gonna need some shore money when you hit the beach at Frisco, right? I got me three months back pay. Three months back pay? Man, them civilians make that much every week. And you gotta be fat. Maybe spending all your time at the USO. I never thought of that. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. Now, there's some poker players down there that's gotta be reformed. Now, a hundred bucks will buy you half interest in the tape. I don't know. You lose that hundred. You lose? I'm... Man, I got an edge. Why do you think I let this beard grow? Oh. You guys ever see the view from the top of the mark? Boy, that's really something. Feel the cards. Next month, that's where you'll find me. I may spend my whole leave up there. Just sitting up there on top of everything, looking at that view. Why? Tell me that. Why? Because for two years, all I've had to look at is gauges and valves and your faces. I gotta get that out of my system. Maybe things have changed since I was there. You just have to pay to get in and pay to get out. Yeah. Where are you gonna get the money? Where? Donations, boys. Donations. So deal the cards. Dispatch, Captain. Thanks. Ask Lieutenant Mason to come to my room. Aye, aye, sir. Well, we can leave the area any time. All right. We're proceeding immediately to Woodlark Island. Our route is between Cape Hennepin and Green Island. Well, it's a little off course for San Francisco, isn't it, Captain? We're picking up a party of Australians and 3,000 pounds of equipment. What's the deal? Special mission. We're to land them on New Britain, near Cape Oxford. Is that all it says, sir? Passage to and from to be undetected. Oh, the Japanese behind every bush on New Britain. That sounds like a good idea. You want me to break the news to the men? No discussion with the crew. They'll, they'll know soon enough. Steady on course 140. All ahead, standard. Standing on course, one, four, zero. All ahead, standard. All engines answering ahead, standard, sir. The way I figure it, it's got to be Australia. Why? Tell me that. Why? Because if it ain't Australia, 
There's nothing there after that except the South Pole. Man, that's kind of far from Frisco. for us. Right full rudder. All ahead, one third. Major Andrews, huh? Senior officer. Why the heavy board, Major? I'm Commander of Hotel with Captain. She seems a little small, Captain. I got 46 men here. Oh, we'll find room for them. It's worth seeing, anyway. All right, then, come on, make a move, smartly. Looks like a bunch of farmers. Fine-looking bunch of men, Major. Oh, they're a bunch of larrikins from out back, but they're going for a blue. Oh, yes. I uh, understand you have the intelligence information. I don't know the waters myself, but my head boy comes from those parts. What the? What's holding him up? Hey, Arthur! You stop along together all night? Time, huh? You fella belong, you come along quick time, huh? What'd he say? How do I know what he said? I don't speak Australian. All right, let's get stuck into it then, huh? No more. Boys him say, government ship have altogether too much small hole. Altogether too much frightened. Better me savvy go along bush belong me. Oh, beg pardon, sir. Sorry, Captain. What's the crisis? I don't know, sir. No, no, no. no. Oh. Captain, we aren't taking them fuzzy wuzzies aboard, are we? We are. Too much smoky hole. I don't go down. No, 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 I haven't got a bigger one, have you? If we had, we'd be in trouble. Well, if they won't go down, they'll have to ride on deck, that's all. No, they won't. We'll be submerged most of the time. I don't know what your orders are, Major, but I've only got three hours to get your load aboard and underway. All right. Captain, I've got an idea for getting them below. See you on seven. Well, the way I get it, sir, the chief, whatever he is, claims he isn't afraid. It's the rest of them. But well, if we can get him down below, maybe he'll tell the others it's okay. Okay, we'll try it. You go below and stand by. I'll drop him down to you. He hesitates at the last moment. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> Also, the head boy. Uh, haven't you got that gift ready for him? Huh? Oh, sure have, Captain. Hey, right here. Yeah. See? Souvenir of the grouper. Got the name right on it. Now we'll look the rest of the boat over. This is our window. See all together, people belong out there. All right. All right, let's get them below. Him, he master, belong government. Too much good fellow. Mm -hmm. Him, friend, belong me. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Party of 17 Australians and 29 natives were embarked. In addition, rubber boats of 3,000 pounds of equipment were taken aboard. The group had got underway for New Britain before daybreak. This shows a cove somewhere north of Cape Oxford, but that's all. 
No scale, no landmarks, nothing. Well, I'm sorry, Captain, that's all the drill they gave me. But you're expected. The natives are going to light a signal fire high in the hills behind the cove. Major, if this coast is anything like the ones I've seen, there'll be a dozen fires. How am I expected to find the right one? Even if I do, what about soundings? This cove is probably too shallow to dive in and certainly too small to maneuver in. I don't intend to be a sitting duck for anybody. Well, nobody blame you for that. Get in as close as I can. You'll have three or four miles to go on the rubber boats. And Captain, the boats they brought aboard were fitted with attachments for outboard motors. The faster they get in, the better. Yes, sir, but no motors came with the equipment. Major, I believe you said your head boy came from that area? That's right, yeah. I think we better find out how much he knows about it. I'll get him. Savvy, I told you do it, no. Him, me, no understand these words. He no savvy these words. Suppose when me talk up government fella like King, belong me. Bad fella, master, make them all fella work too much hard like devil, devil. No good. Stop along, Calibus. All right. All right what? Do you know what he's talking about? Well, it's Prince in English. Drongo uh, was up to party and he got in strife with the Johns. Whatever that means. Ask him if he knows the area around Cape Oxford. Yes, sir. Catch a Mary belong me. Him he cry too, too much. Soon now him say, I hear him I. Did you get any of that? Oh, yes. It uh, seems he has a minister for home affairs waiting for him. I think I savvy this stuff a little, Captain. That means the boy has a wife on the island, so he must know something that's useful. If we can ever find out what it is. Ask him about the cold. Is there a reef? He understands you, Captain. Good. Yes, sir. This fellow reef, you know, like reef, belong country, belong master. Anchorage, stop all night in Anchorage. No more. Close up. Dead. Finish. Suppose for him, he still wait. Translation? Some bloke in a foreign after came a cropper. Mason? It sounds like there's a reef, Captain. A small craft found it in the cove. Might be a navigational hazard. That's not the only one. No. <sighs> What's he say? Belly belong me. Too much big humbug fella. <laughs> That'd be a basket of oranges, wouldn't it? He's chronic. Translation? I think he means the boy seasick, Captain. The group had dove just before daybreak and continued the rest of the day submerged. Japanese aircraft were operating in the area, and the coast was expected to be well guarded. Captain Hartel would have to feel his way in close enough for the landing party to paddle ashore. Count scope. How bad is it? Well, it doesn't look good, sir. There's only two paddles per boat. None of the landing party's ever been in a rubber raft before. Okay, we'll use our men as paddlers on the first trip. They'll have to scrounge some additional paddles from the island natives. Those headhunters behaving themselves? Oh, yes, sir. Real friendly. Hey, don't you know better than to sneak up behind a guy? Take a walk. You're making me nervous. Go on. Well, it ain't poker. It's nothing I've ever seen before. Get a look at those cards. What's the matter with them? The backs one. The readers. Go on. I tell you, I got them spotted. Every loving card in the deck is marked. And somebody's gonna get killed. Who's doing it? They're all doing it, Cobber. But it's all Dinkum. They all know the markings. Everybody knows what everybody else has got. <laughs> You're kidding. So, uh, what's the idea of the game? To see who can cheat the best. You watch. They'll find a dead bird in a minute. You mean they're gonna start shooting? Nah. I mean some gallop will walk into a snare. Yeah? Then what happens? He's in the chair. I mean he has to shout everybody a drink. When he gets back. How long do you think it'll be, Captain? 
landfall in about four hours. How long it'll take us to find that cove, I wouldn't want to guess. I'm afraid we've been a nuisance to you. All part of the job, Major. Well, they, they tell me you were due to go back to America. We've been away two years. A few more days won't kill us. Uh, but your lads must be anxious. I know. I only got home myself a short time ago. Oh? Where? North Africa. Some of my lads were the, the rats of Tobruk. You didn't waste any time getting back into action. I've been in the wrong war up to now. My father and my brother are prisoners of the Japanese in my bowel. Sorry. Uh, there's been worse. One of my blokes was on the north coast of New Guinea when they came. He had to climb over the, the Owen Stanley Mountains in his shorts and sneakers. Captain, plane off our starboard quarter. You better go below, Major. Stand by to dive. circled overhead for a few minutes and then flew away. There was nothing to indicate whether the group had been sighted. Captain Hartel proceeded towards Cape Oxford on the surface. Hey, hey what's going on here? We follow him all together, make him rain, belong government ship. Me no savvy this business. Hey, what'd he say? What's he yammering about? The line forms to the left. You'll pay your money and wait your turn. Are these guys taking showers? Ah, they just like to work the valves. They've been lining up all night. Well, I ain't gonna put up with much more of it. I tell you right now, I'm gonna belt one of these guys. <laughs> Pick your man. I got a buck says he'll take you. <laughs> I can make out at least eight fires. Same count here. Now look there. Blew off the starboard bow. Pip? Yeah. It's a little higher than the others. That might mean it's up in the hill. It could just as easily be a Japanese patrol. How do we know? Well, you want me to give the recognition signal? No, not yet. We'll get in closer. Well, how close are you going to get, Captain? Well, I don't intend to let them drift around in the dark. We'll go right into the cove so they'll have a short hold of the beach. Yards. Well, these are in another four or five hundred yards. All ahead, one third. Lanny, Whitey, Danny, Bison. Very well. Hey, how do I look? Wacko, you look like a flaming cow cocky. Is that good? Good for the master. Go away, will you? What's this for? Him, he said you're too much good fellow master. Give you present. You mean he's giving me this crooked deck? You savvy humbug, another fellow stopped the long government ship. Catch him plenty money, quick time you. All right. Hey, get a load of this joker. He's giving me these crazy cars to clean you guys out. What are you trying to do, get me killed? Him, he say you friend belong him. Can you beat that? You both, as soon as you hit the beach, forage for some paddles, as many as you can get. Yes, sir. And if you have to leave the beach, be careful. Might be Japanese patrols in the area. Aye, aye, sir. Uh, the equipment will go on with the next load, then the Navy boys. Good old. Captain, they let the fire go out on the hill. We can't see anything to get a fix. Get a radar range on the bluffs, then. If we don't maintain position, those boats will never find us. Aye, aye. Captain, you've done a bundle job, then. I and the lads appreciate it. Part of the job, Ranger. Where are the rest of the paddle? You both went after him. The village is back there in the jungle. He hasn't come back yet. Well, if he's not on the beach when you get back, send a signal. Aye, aye. My guess off. Well, it 
ain't Robinson Crusoe. What took you so long? Uh, Captain turned the connection. I got fouled up in that village. It's the craziest place I ever been. Women, kids, and dogs, and chickens. <laughs> Everybody took off for the hills the minute they seen me. I emptied that village in nothing flat. Can't understand it. <laughs> well, take a look in the mirror and you will. <laughs> I never noticed you right now. But you look wilder than those fuzzy wuzzies. <laughs> <laughs> All right, lads, over you go. Come on, Zingo, it won't hurt you. Pull him strong. Pull him strong. Come on. Hey, guys. Thanks. Thanks. All right, now shove off. Cap, ship just rounded the gate. Ten crew, stand by. How many more to go? Two more trips, Captain. Don't fire until I give you the word. Aye, aye, sir. Deck guns loaded and ready. He can point it right at them. If they move this way, I want to get them first. Take it easy there. Watch his leg. Come on now. Stop. Captain, the men are bringing in an army pilot. He's been hiding out in the jungle. He should have stayed there. He was better off. The enemy passed. The grouper was not sighted. Get him going again, and fast. I'm the captain. Name's Hartel. Norman. Boy, am I glad to see you. I thought I was going to be stuck there till the end of the war. <laughs> How'd you get here? I got shot down flying a photo reconnaissance over our ball. Say, uh, what are you doing here? We just brought in a landing party. Where they're going or what they're planning to do, I couldn't say. I can tell you where we're going. San Francisco. <laughs> How's our passenger? Fine. Pharmacist mate fixed up his foot. He has rice cream to make him feel at home. Wonder what those guys are gonna do back there. Make reconnaissance on Japanese positions, I suppose. MacArthur'll probably be making a landing soon. I hope we've helped to make it earlier. No doubt the Grupa's night landing helped make the invasion of New Britain easier when General MacArthur's troops went ashore the following December. S.S. Grouper. Now, how the devil did that get here? I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. We have with us Captain John D. Mason, who was then the executive officer of the USS Grouper. Red, as you look back on it, I bet you are glad you had to postpone that trip to San Francisco. We'd been on patrol for quite a while. And there was a lot of moaning when this new assignment came through. But it turned out to be an experience none of us will forget. Your captain, Spike Hartel, has told me your passengers were a pretty frightening outfit. They were the kinds you wouldn't want real mad at you, so we were careful how we handled them. After we convinced them it was okay to come below, we had very little trouble. Apparently, they were as natural as children. Yes, and twice as inquisitive. There wasn't a single inhibition in the whole crowd. Maybe they have something in a way of life. I want to congratulate you and the ship's company of the group on another great job of submarining. Be with us again when the silent service brings you another true and exciting submarine story. Take your love and lost goodbye Through the deep blue underneath the ocean We'll control the ocean wide Underneath the sea, safe and 
See? 